Hey folks, this is Chris with Oregon Figs. This is part two of uh, my shaping and pruning fig trees to decrease the footprint and just for other concerns, which I'll go over. So this is Figo Preto. This is a phenomenal variety. When I grew this, I knew nothing about shaping trees and this was growing almost horizontal. So when I up potted, I turned it, turned the tree and um, took off lots of sprawling growth to create this footprint. I reduced the footprint a bit, but it's still wide, you know, and I don't mind that because it's, the branches have fairly good spacing and I'm good with that. So there isn't one way to prune and shape. Sometimes mother nature kind of has a hand in all of it. This is Israeli black. Now I typically don't pinch anywhere near this height, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the height. It's, it's coming up about 11 inches, right? Mother Nature pinched this for me. In other words, what happened was the top of the tree uh, died and it sent out these three branches. They are in more of a goblet shape. Now, let's talk about the difference between goblet shape and martini glass. The goblet shape, doing the same thing martini glass is doing. It's creating an open center. You see how the center is wide open here? Then, the martini glass is just more upright with less curves. They're both accomplishing the same thing. This is Ischia Black. I hard pruned it two years ago because I want to put it in ground. So the growth that I got this year, and I did get some good figs, this year's growth was from here up to here. Let's take a look at that. I'm gonna guess 20 inches. Bear with me here. All right. It's 18 inches. So I've got after my hard prune, this year I got two scaffolds that are going straight up, which is exactly what I want because this tree is going in ground. I've got another smaller scaffold that's filling in a place that had a void, so it's not overcrowding. Then I've got one really nice thick one coming up from here to here, and this one might be 20. So that one's 21. And then I have two smaller ones here that aren't, uh, aren't as good as the other ones. So I've got a lot of growth here. That's this year's growth, which I will not touch. You see how every terminal bud is, has been unmolested, right? They're all still there. This tree is ready to go in ground because I can have a narrow footprint on the way up to keep it away from the box. So that's one thing that I'm concerned with with my in-grounds is to squeeze them together to keep them away from the box. This question of whether it's going in ground or not is San Miguel Rocho, AKA Azores Dark. If I was gonna keep this in a pot, I would not touch any of these branches, right? I would leave them alone because they're spaced nicely and they're gonna give great air circulation and plenty of light. But I might wanna put this in ground. So I have got to take the distance from the stem to the outermost point and I have to reduce it. Bear with me, I'm kinda measuring as I go so you can, you can see, I'll give you the, the dimensions. So this, this branch right here is coming out 27 inches, right, from the center of the pot. So the diameter to the edge is nine. So that's uh, 18, 18 inches beyond the pot. Well, if I'm in a place where I have, A, I'm leaving my pots out all winter long and I have plenty of room, that'll be fine. If 
I want to bring this into a garage and have it near a whole bunch of other pots, it would still probably work. It would just be shuffling and turning and twisting and you could probably still make it work. The whole point of reducing the horizontal footprint is to make it easier to store. That's one of the biggest advantages for, for my advantage in ground in the box. So this, this is a fantastic shape as it is. And if you have plenty of space, leave this tree alone, right? There isn't, I'm not trying to tell you there's only one way to prune. Every tree offers different challenges. And you just, it's the way you look at this overall. What are your objectives? This is what I said in the first video. What are your objectives? Are your objectives to grow figs in pots and bring them in in the winter? Then the footprint makes sense to be not as wide. This is Vincenzo. This would be a goblet shape. Mother Nature pruned this for me. I didn't prune it. That's why you don't see any hole or anything where a branch came off. It just died at the tip and it created this on its own. So that's just, that's serendipity. That's the art of finding something you're not looking for, right? In this case, maybe I was looking for it. Actually, <laughs> thinking back on it, I was thinking put, about putting this in ground, so I really don't want three scaffolds that low. So I may end up taking, I may end up taking this scaffold and this scaffold off and leaving this one and then just tying it up and creating a single stem tree. It'll slow everything down. But it depends, once again, it depends on your objectives on how you're doing this. So I want people to understand when I'm putting these videos out, I'm not trying to say this is the only way to do anything, right? What I'm trying to do is say, this is why I do this. These are the reasons behind why I do this. I think footprint matters, right? There's a, what is that? That's called noir. You know, you can see. Let's just go through some trees. This is Tia Pena, which is another one I'm putting in ground for the Brava. So I'll take those two bottom stubs off. I'll take this stub here off. Uh, and then I'll probably leave the three that are remaining, put it in ground, give it some time, see what happens. I'm not concerned with Brava in year one. It's more of a year two or three thing. Right, this is De La Roca. It kind of just did its own thing. I never, I never pinched this tree. This is just a shape it came up with. Let's take a, a look at a couple more that are kind of interesting, I think. Pisaludo Nero. I never pinched it. The tip died. So, got three scaffolds that just form naturally. Roja, I want to put it in ground. So I'm forced, I've got a dilemma here, you know? So I've tried to take one of the branches and create an area where that might be the single stem and I might have a lot of cuttings. Yeah, that's gonna delay the tree. Of course it is. I'm not gonna get fruit on those branches, of course not. But I'm looking more long range and I have a goal. Here's one that uh, just refused to spread and everything's grown really close together. That sometimes happens. I mean, you could change that if you wanted to by putting a stick and, and pulling a branch, pulling a branch out that way. You could put a stake in and tie it and spread it. There's all kinds of things you can do. So I guess the biggest point I'm trying to make is that sometimes Mother Nature is going to do her own thing. And here's a Roja. That was an air layer from my tree. And it's just started this multiple scaffold um, tree way to the low to the ground. So then I have to look at the scaffolds and I, if I want to make this thing a single stem and put it in ground, I got to get it bigger than this. So I could take this scaffold, tie it up and take these three off for cuttings. I'm not trying to make tons of cuttings. I'm trying to shape a tree. So I guess when you 
here are my videos. I'm not trying to claim I've got one way to do it and that's the only way to do it. That would be foolhardy. And I'm not that arrogant. I understand that there's many ways to do this. And the single stem thing has been around. I know on our figs, uh, Pete was talking about it back in 2015. I think he was probably the first person on our figs to talk about it. So other people have added to it and that's what I've done. I haven't tried to steal the technique as my own. I've just tried to say, I like it. And these are the reasons I like it. And once again, sometimes things are gonna happen like you're gonna get tip death and it's gonna create scaffolds on its own. And you're gonna have to change things up if you want a single stem that's higher up. Some people love them low to the ground like this one is. I prefer them a little higher up. That's just personal preference. You know, um, when Pons puts his trees in ground, he grows a single stem and he grows it way up. I'm not sure the exact height, but his trees are way up. And you know, so you need a, basically need a ladder to pick the figs off a lot of his trees. I'm getting older. I don't want to get up on a ladder to pick figs. I'd rather keep them a little bit lower. So that's the points. Those are the points I'd want, I wanted to make is that I'm not saying this is the only way to do something, right? Um, I'm hoping people, when they watch my videos, they're not picking that up. That I'm just saying that this has worked for me or this is why I'm doing it. And these are the reasons that I shape the way I do. Not that this is the only way to shape. You'll learn the more trees you grow, you're gonna have some strange things happen and you're gonna say, well, I like that shape. And that may be the one you choose. But whether you wanna call it a martini glass, which that clearly shows the martini shape, or a goblet, which that clearly shows the goblet shape. The point is air circulation in the middle of the tree, more light to be allowed in the middle of the tree. Don't get hung up on semantics and experiment. Don't be intimidated by any of this stuff and, and stay away from these, these terminal buds if you can, right? Try to, try to leave those alone. Hey, hope you enjoyed this. Hope I explained a few things. Oh, pickup truck going up the hill past me. I hope this explained a few things. And like I say, don't get hung up on semantics. Try to understand the overall objective. If you're bringing trees in ground, in a garage, and stuffing a lot of trees in there, you don't want a super wide footprint, right? Because it's gonna be a challenge. You'll have to shuffle and turn this way and that way, and it's more work. That's why I, su I suggest growing in a more upright fashion. And uh, it just, to me, it just makes sense. One other thing, when I was talking about hor removing horizontal growth, I'm looking at the big picture, right? I'm looking at, this is the center of the tree, right? The single stem. I'm looking at anything going this way horizontally and that way. Whether that branch has a little bit of an angle upward and it isn't exactly horizontal see this is going up a bit it is horizontal would be like that right so that my point is to make the horizontal footprint better you're going to take something that might have a little angle but it's overall going horizontally from the distance from the stem so i should have explained that better in the first video it's tough because what I'm trying to do is give everyone some information that, especially newbies, that they can learn and they can maybe understand more from. And uh, there's always so many different ways to interpret what I'm saying. You know, I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. And I try really hard in my videos to make it where people think, wow, these are great thoughts. I'm gonna expand on this, or I'll use this and I won't use that. I'm just putting thoughts out there. I'm not trying to program everyone in to the fact that they need to be growing their trees like this, right? You don't need to grow your tree like that. Grow your tree however you want, but glean from my video 
as much information to maybe make it a little bit easier, or at least to understand a few things. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.